Good evening, everyone. It's Ivan here from Tradefloor. Joining me today is Patrick Nelson from Reach Markets. Thanks for joining us, Pat. Good evening, Ivan. How are you going? Good. It's almost like we haven't done this for a while. Yeah. Sure. It's been, what was it, Thursday? Yeah. <laughs> All right, so today we're going to do a wrap-up of the game from the end of last year. Obviously, a lot of you here are looking for the um, the one golden trade, the, the golden bullet that uh, put people, uh, it made the winner go from 50 grand to 1.6 million. Yeah. It, it, first of all, uh, Moon, who's on the session today, congratulations. So the winner was, we'll go, we'll go oh, into that in nice. a moment. Just, just... I'd like to just jump ahead. <laughs> Uh, but it was a um, it was a, a close contest. It was a very close contest. <laughs> the winner uh, between fifth and sixth. May have, yeah. <laughs> I know uh, all of the time that we've run this. So this has been what this is about five years. So four, three, three, four years in, and we've never had anything quite as massive as this. Yeah, so congratulations, man. Fantastic, great trading. Uh, had it on a string and went yeah. hard, and that's yeah. how you win a game like yeah. this. You, but um, yeah, I love how you really can well. stop though either. But anyway, we're yeah. going to talk about this. That's so right. look, just really quickly, for those of you that are just joining us, uh, welcome to tonight's session. We're going to quickly go through. Um, so I'm first going to quickly tell you what trade floor is because, you know, it's obligatory um, and why Patrick is joining me today. Uh, we'll look at some of the key uh, strategies that the winners have employed um, and, you know, sort of the first place uh, uh, winner and the second place winner were quite similar in their strategy. Uh, and then there was sort of some more in the in the uh, sort of some slightly different strategies in the third uh, place to uh, uh, performer. Um, unfortunately, we don't give any prizes for third, but um, uh, there's some good trading that is worth noting. Um, we'll also talk about some of our favorite strategies and and you know and I guess what the next steps are for you as traders. So uh, let's kick into it. So um, just for your information, Trade Floors are, um, is an Aussie fintech company, um, and we've been building solutions for financial services since 2000. Uh, and uh, 14 financial services market um, and uh, it all sort of started from a small dream specifically to tailor solutions to the derivatives market um, and we've been specialists in the in the Australian uh, derivative space uh, we've got some of these big clients on our space uh, you know sort of 60 well, I should say 70 percent of the retail market now uses our risk management systems uh, on a day-to-day -day basis to manage their uh, derivatives risk management uh, so we've we've sort of we own this space, um, and um, I guess it was about two years ago, two and a half years ago, that we came together officially. Although we've been doing stuff together with Patrick for uh, I think it was a Christmas 2015, we started building the first calculator together. Uh, we were just talking about this, but uh, we came together formally uh, and created implied volatility, a name that came up on one of the webcasts actually that we're running together uh, about two years ago. And the idea was to go in and really build the most powerful retail trading experience in Australia. And so uh, we, we've been building this options game and we've been, every year we've been uh, enhancing it. Uh, there's now four four games a year uh, that that, uh, that run. Uh, and uh, and we've just started doing this recently and we've been taking in feedback from all of the users. And the idea is to really make derivatives or options accessible to the public to understand what they're doing and to be able to do that in a, you know, I guess, in an understandable way. Absolutely. And <clears throat> I think uh, if you're going to trade, uh, there's certain things that you've got to be good at and there's information that you need access to. And I think from our side of it, we look at the solution for an options trader not being the same thing for everyone. Mm -hmm. And it's also an area that you've really got to invest heavily in and care about if you're going to support people to do it. So on one side of it, um, what trade for have built over a long period of time was the data and the platform that you could actually build a retail trading plan, a platform off. Uh, and so what we have come out the other side with is a system that allows you to be able to trade using the best technology if you're an options trader. It allows you to trade at the lowest prices, but it also gives you things like trade ideas that are quant tested. Um, uh, access to education so that you can understand how to use the technology but you can also get learn new strategies and be supported and the options game is an example of that and we have a team of advisors so you can speak to someone because you need to understand how to use the tech or you can speak to someone because you want help structuring up a trade or getting better execution or better better fills on your position so 
you can either use full service and have someone come to you with an idea, you can trade online at the lowest prices, uh, and you've got the technology to be able to navigate your way through uh, this. And, um, and, and it came about because we were looking at it going, well, on one side, you've got online discount, but if you're an options trader, the user experience is pretty ordinary. And if you're dealing with a full service advisor, are you dealing with someone that's got the credentials and the experience to help you? Or maybe sometimes you want to speak to an advisor pay for that experience but then when you close your trade out you're like well I know what to do I just need to do it so all of those things came about and our quest is to support options traders um, to have the best uh, opportunity to be able to make money by reducing costs or by improving the quality of the decisions they're mm -hmm. making so we, we, we created implied volatility uh, we've got the best rates in the country for options uh, we're the only platform in Australia that allows you to actually trade combinations and multiple options together uh, free in, the, in a single click, um, real-time pricing. There, there's so much stuff that, that that's in there, um, and we're not trying to compete, I guess, with where um, the the market is in Australia because it's not it's really non-existent from a technology point of view. Um, so we're challenging ourselves to to be the best platform globally, uh, and I think that really with a lot of the work and the feedback that we've been getting, I think that we're we're getting to the point where we're it's, it's close. It's feeling close. So um, and also everything is underpinned ultimately by the education that we have. So I guess the big the big focus is to go on and move away from traditional stockbroking and in, in sort of the, the traditional, um, uh, what you probably imagine, uh, Wolf of Wall Street type character and move into a new, uh, sort of utilize a new world. Um, and uh, if you think about sort of the technological advances, we went from, you know, from 1956 to 2015, I love putting these slides, so apologies for those that have heard this before, um, you know, it's been a trillion fold increase in performance. And so I guess what we're saying is, you know, with, with where technology has been, you go from these museum kind of relic pieces that used to weigh two and a half tons, that used to support um, mind blowing space missions to now carrying an iPhone XS in your pocket, which is six times more powerful than these machines. So effectively you can land 240 million Apollo 11 space shuttles on the moon. It's, it's equivalent of what it's a that. a lot of space shuttles. It's, it's, all, it's all, I mean, 240 space shuttle, 240 million space shuttles is a lot of space shuttles. But you know, what, we, what we've done is, um, you know, we, we, I guess where we were a bit different is we're not sitting there going, how do we create the next uh, social media platform and get people sharing photos of each other. Um, what we're trying to do is, is try and solve real mathematical problems with what we're doing and um, ultimately comes into the um, in, into where our, our quant ideas have come from. And uh, it's, you know, it's done pretty well over time. So in the last sort of four games, we finished first in one week, second, third, and we would have finished third in this one. So it um, gives you a bit of an indication of the consistency. And that's sort of what we're all about. Now, put it into perspective, we are um, uh, playing by the rules in the same way as everybody else. So we are leveraging into trades like everybody else would. Uh, we're slowly, you know, we're moving a little bit away from, from what our real, um, I guess, risk management rules are. But it does give you an indication that it's something that works consistently. And we've seen a whole range of different markets. You know, what, what was the uh, December 2019 was an extremely different market to December 2018, as you remember. Uh, where it was, you know, so this was a sideways market. Um, December 2018 was it was a strong downwards market. So, um, very interesting uh, kind of stuff. So, all right, we're going to talk about how the winners of the game won. And before we do get into that, I think we should probably read a disclaimer that uh, everything that that's that's here is is really, uh, I guess, I mean, actually, it, it's general advice only, and you you can go to that. But it's really there's no real advice that we're going to be talking about today. So it's all educational purposes. Uh, it's purely for your educational uh, research. Um, but just in case there's any general advice, do you want to give the amazing warning that uh, you do? Well, if there is, and you were thinking that maybe you wanted to trade options uh, at the end of it, you should go and seek um, some some advice off an advisor. We're not going to provide you that. Yes, it's not suitable for everyone. Make sure you know what you're doing. All right, leaderboard. So at the end of the presentation, Moon Patel, had a return of 3,331% for about four weeks. Uh, finishing the, the game with $1.6 million. Uh, Brett Danker was second, trading support resistance, very similar trades, $250,000, 500% return. Chang Chen, uh, 152000 um, Michael, uh, 
percent your marketing guys yep. didn't move him over didn't move it across uh, it's okay uh mal 278 percent zane 255 percent return so really strong uh performance across um uh across uh i think uh even taking moon out i think we, we had a very one of the most successful games considering the market didn't really go anywhere so we're going to look at moon's trades moon from new south wales and thank you for joining us 15 trades Usually we have a bit more of a balanced view on people's <laughs> trading, but Moon did such a wonderful job. We're going to go through all these trades, um, and uh, you know, they're good trades. They're good. They're good yeah. trades. They're good trades. Um, so he traded uh, long calls and long puts, um, and timed the market quite Some well. Some people know that as just buying a call and yep. buying a put. Yeah, that's simple. <laughs> saying it. Yep. Yes. Thank you. Um, so it's pretty much the most basic trade. Uh, it's where if you buy a call option, you're anticipating that the market goes up. If you're buying a put option, you anticipate that the market is going down. And then that's that's effectively your your basis of the trade. So it's a beginning trade um, and obviously has very good uh, upside if you get it right. So the maximum profit is unlimited uh, for a long call. For the put, it's limited to the, to the stock going to zero. The maximum loss is limited to the amount of premium that you pay. So if you pay $1,000 to get into a trade, you're never going to lose more than that. Right? That's sort of the basis of that. So uh, the trades that he did, and, and I mean, have a look at timing. So um, started off, there was there was a, a put, there was a, a, you know, which was which was uh, great. So he effectively got the candle, uh, made a quick you know, $20,000 that day. So bought a 67.25 put, closed it later in the day, then ramped it up and bought a call option and how's that for uh for timing uh effectively got the candle on a low um sold it ultimately there on the 27th of november uh net return 120 in three days um uh bought a put so he went short on that market so effectively he'll profit if as the market goes down closed it on that candle it actually expired on that day in the money uh, $723,000 in return on the 450 put options that he did. Then uh, he was long on that candle, put 2,700 lots of XJO, uh, $510,000 worth of position. Um, he then uh, sold it about the same time, uh, bought some puts, did a bit of trading in and out, sold some calls when he went back into a call position on 12 December 17th, closed that out 1.8 mil, um, and then sort of went a bit sideways from there. Uh, picked at $2.1 million. I mean, that's... And then was forced to leave the casino because the game ended. <laughs> <laughs> we do have, actually, um, uh, we, did, we did reach out to Moon today. Um, and got some feedback on his trading. I think maybe we should talk about that in, in, in a bit, answers to some questions, some really interesting. I mean, we'll, we'll publish that. Yeah, um, so Moon, Moon is, hasn't been trading for a long period of time. I think he's in there a year and a half or something like that. I've got the notes on my phone. I'm yeah. bringing him up in a sec. But um, And uh, Moon's online today. Look forward to catching up when we get up to Sydney uh, next. Um, uh, but, um, yeah, look, uh, I think what I get out of that trading is – you know, obviously you can win and lose and, you know, when you're trading with a big amount of money over a short period of time like that, the results um, are, um, uh, are going to be determined by a, bit of, by a bit of luck. There's an element of that in it because it's a short period of time. But what it demonstrates is the power of options, right? The amount of leverage that you can get from it if you want. But not everyone's going to trade like that. That mm. is one very specific way of trading mm. and... In the, in the game, because there was a lot of range, uh, you know, people have been range trading a lot. Um, what Moon did well, and if you're going to play the next game and you're thinking about how do you win it, um, range, you know, trading those moves, but really getting in there in a big way and doubling down on it, probably the way you're going to win the game, mm. uh, which is, is, is the way. But ultimately, it's an opportunity to learn more about the market, right? Mm. And, um, and uh, practice some trades and do some different stuff. Mm. So... One, one good place to do this as well is, um, and by the way, Daniel, yes, the recording will be available to everyone. Um, but one good way to do this also, you know, if you want to go in and, and try some different hypotheses in the market, we have a back tester in the system. So if you do continue and you want to play around with, with the platform, there's a back tester that allows you to go in and, and effectively tick through day by day 
Um, maybe we'll, we can look yeah. at that later in the moon. So uh, later. Yeah, in, well, let, actually, let, on that point, if you want to get access to any of those things, type in yes into the chat box, and um, we'll set you up. So everyone who's playing the game has uh, got an opportunity to take the platform on for another period of time for free. So if you type in yes into the chat box, um, that'll give you access to uh, the back testing. It'll also give you access to all the technology you used while you were playing the game and access to our trade ideas. Yep, so and weekly sessions, exclusive webcasts, all that kind of stuff. Yep. Uh, okay, um, uh, the, uh, did Mo uh, the question was, did Moon win on every one of his trades? Uh, no. No, no, no. But, 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 yeah, well, but actually, a, lo a lot of them. He, he lost half a million dollars. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, you know. He just made a lot more than he yeah. lost. Um, uh, Martin yeah. did ask a question is, you know, outside the game, can you actually buy 5,000 calls at the showing price? Martin, if you want to buy 5,000 calls, I will make you a market. <laughs> market makers will take that but uh yeah i mean that's 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 a nine hundred thousand dollar position it's a really good question but if you've got big orders like that and um then you just you just call through and speak to us and we'll organize to yeah. that's that's where um, the advisors will come in yeah, and yeah. we'll talk to the market makers for you but they are all our advisors too have got very good relationships mm. with the market makers uh, and a specific options guys that's all they do 100 percent mm. of their book and they've got good connections day. with the market makers yeah. as well um just really quickly sorry uh martin implications of that trade were none because they were all board positions so because there was limited risk involved there's no margin and so with options sometimes there is so um anyway all good um all right I'll just just the one thing i'll i'll say it's interesting um, I was talking to someone today about this and I've been trading for a long period of time and I do a lot of other stuff other than trading and I don't consider myself. Someone asked me, what do I do? I don't say I trade options. Like it's just, <laughs> it's like a hobby. It's like I ride a push bike um, on the weekends and on, or like ocean swimming or doing stuff like that. There's, there's it's something that I do and, and um, people go into it for different reasons, but some people and, you know, are in there because one day they actually want to be full-time traders and that's what mm. they want to do. And um you know, for me, it's always just been about generating some additional additional yeah. income, yeah. right? And but and also having what, fun. I think I was looking at the questions as mm. well. So that's what Moon was saying as well. Yeah. So do you want? I mean, maybe just well for Moon, it was um, additional income and after retirement. And I think uh, you know, after retirement, having something you can do that you can actually make real money out of, and also keeps you engaged. And trading is a lot of fun. Um, it's too much fun sometimes. <laughs> it's distracting. Um, <laughs> do you, do you, I, I have to say though, when we when we first started, and remember the, the feedback that we got on our trading systems. God, this is not what I expected. It's so boring. Yeah, it's just, <laughs> yeah. It's just, <laughs> well, that's right. Yeah, tra tra trading. Well, is, neither Ivan yeah. or I do a lot of trading during the day, so yeah. it's kind of like set a position on what something we think that's going to be a big move. Although I, by the straddles I've been doing recently, we're about to get free, into them. Oh, not, could, not could yours, take, but... take up a bit more time on the trading side, as I discovered on Friday. You, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of what you did. So, um, third player, so, uh, sorry, second player, yes. Uh, so, Brett from New South Wales, similar trade of type of range trading. I'm not going to go into the, into the details because literally it was buying calls, buying puts. Yep. Uh, very, very, very similar type trading. Uh, very good in in the market conditions that were in December. Um, uh, but I'm going to talk a, a little bit about a different strategy, which was Chanks from New South Wales. 25 different legs. So one thing that I love about this game um, is that we had a lot of activity. Um, in fact, uh, I was actually surprised when we looked at the end as to how many trades we did, considering that it was sort of Christmas period and, and we actually expected it not to be an extremely uh, heavy game. Uh, mm -hmm. The game before we had, I reckon, 1,500 number. people yep. or something. Yep. Uh, 1,600 people, I think, participated. This game was, was not that far yep. behind in the end, which we didn't really, you know, it wasn't marketed heavily. And, um, you know, which, which is interesting. So, well, and, and just on that point, because this is something that comes up every year and um, people say, but at Christmas, nothing happens. And what we notice is that uh, trading volumes, and I've run an options desk for 16, 17 years now. So it's something that I've, I've, I've looked at over a long period of time for normal, well, for us mortals, tra retail traders, let's call ourselves that, um, the... We just, we keep trading, right? And if, if anything, we kind of, you know, we're a bit more laid back. There's less pressure on at work or we're on holidays or whatever. We, we've got more opportunities to find trades. There's Santa Claus rallies and things like that to get excited about. But uh, our trading volumes over December were very high, January very high. Uh, but if you look at volumes in the market, they halved. Mm. Um, but there were plenty of opportunities. So if you like Moon was, and you want to trade... just you traded more in December. 5,000, well, yeah, more time, but... <laughs> If you've got 5,000, um, you want to do 5,000 locks on the XJO. But yeah, yeah, that might be a problem <laughs> for you. Uh, 
No, nah, like no, but but, the, but, but, but no, market makers will make a market for you know if you tried to they get the equivalent notional value in in James Hardy, you might might be a bit high. Yeah, anyway. yeah, that's kind of trouble. <laughs> yeah. So twenty five different legs, um, a long straddle uh, is the is the strategy that it, that um, it Chuck made, and so th this is interesting. So. Um, it's again it's a simple trade uh what it does is a long straddle is purchasing a call and a put at the money at the same time so where you make money on this is where you're trading volatility so you think that okay we're at a pivot point the market could go up or it could go down but as long as it moves i'm gonna make money that's the concept of a straddle so you had a few straddles i was thinking about putting one on at the end uh two weeks ago mm -hmm. i didn't um, the market got away. You did put a straddle on while we were talking about, and that that went quite well because you got the breakout and and it moved higher. Uh, we did a poll that day. Most people on the poll in our trading group said that they were bearish. Mm -hmm. Market obviously went up eighty points from there, and other yep. points you closed down your trade. Um, and so uh, we we sort of had a a bit more of a bearish view, I guess, as well. But we also said, well, if it's going to go up, we don't want to be wrong. Um, and so that's where a straddle is great. So the idea is, is that market goes up, you make money on the directional move. If it crashes, the uncertainty goes up, and we're going to talk a lot about that. It in felt moment. bearish, but we didn't yeah. have any data to, yes. to, to form a view, yeah. and, and, and it probably held you back. You were more looking yeah. at a strip, which is a yeah. bit more of a, as a, a, a bearish bias mm. to it. Mm. Um, but um, you know, it's it's for trading when you're when what you're confident about is that you think volatility will increase, or you think you're at a pivot point. There'll be enough of a move to make money. Either of mm. those scenarios should be good enough for you to make mm. a few bucks. But the best scenario <laughs> is the bearish mode. It's yeah, because because <laughs> you get that uncertainty going yeah. on. So we, we we're gonna we're gonna look a little bit more about that. Um, so again, the risk reward is unlimited. Uh, if the market triples, you, you're doing well. You're limited to to sort of the the premium that you pay um, and again you're looking for when where you know where the stock will go but you expect it to to move a lot so you, you know it could go up or down now the typical thing so in in the in the in the general trading systems that we do a lot of we do a, what's what's really a reverse straddle so one of the most dangerous strategies you can do is sell a straddle and so what that means is that you expect that the market goes nowhere so the great times to do that kind of thing is when the market is extremely fearful, uh, kind of GFC type level uh, uncertainty uh, is where you get lots of premium from the options, lots of uncertainty, and you're effectively becoming an options writer. And so if you think about it from like an insurance point of view, you're effectively becoming the insurance company. So you, you're, um, you're not buying insurance, you're selling insurance. Um, and by the way, for, you know, for, for the guys, uh, you know, who, who are just new to options and, uh, you know, you would have probably seen the 10 by 10 now being options uh, uh, game players. Um, if you haven't, uh, type in 10 by 10. It's a free course that we've got, 10, 10 minute videos. Um, and it, it, it sort of gets you from zero to, to understanding some of the more uh, co difficult concepts as part of the trial. If, if, if you're on implied volatility and, and you know, anybody who's there, uh, it, whether you're paying or not paying, you get access to all the education. We're just about to revamp that as well, uh, add a few more videos to that session. Um, but anyway, if, if you do want to be a part of that trial, um, type, type in yes, um, and you'll get access to all that education. So reverse straddle is pretty scary uh, for, for most people because um, uh, so selling a straddle because if the market moves a lot, you're effectively risking unlimited amounts. Uh, so it's really the the the, the 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 extreme the other extreme of, of, of where people probably want to trade um so what we trade is iron condors and iron condors are um you know for a lot of professional traders they're, they're kind of an ultimate um trade so we, we it, depending on, on whether there's a bullish breakout or bearish breakdown or whether the market is we believe the market isn't going to go anywhere we trade either an iron condor or some variation of that iron condor and they, the iron condors make money in sideways markets. It's a low risk income generation strategy ultimately, uh, and you're trading volatility. So in a lot of the conversations that we have, and for those of you that, that join the trading groups, um, we talk a lot about volatility because that's the third dimension that we ultimately trade. Um, and the idea is, is, you know, so if you're buying a straddle, you expect volatility to go up. We're sort of at, at low levels of volatility for, for the last couple of years. Um, uh, with an iron condor, you're effectively expecting it when there's a spike. 
volatility reverts back to the median. And I think, I think if you're watching the market constantly and you're constantly observing volatility, uh, what you'll, what I find is I'm much better at predicting volatility uh, than I am picking direction. Hmm. But if I've got a strong directional view and then I pair in my view with volatility, I really feel like that's where a significant edge comes from options traders. And then when you, if you talk to options traders, that'll be one of the reasons why um, they love options is that there's got that, as Ivan mentioned, the, the third dimension to how you can make a decision. You've got an area where you can get an edge that you won't get out of necessarily mm. trading other instruments. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which is why the platform's called implied volatility and why we wax on about it all the time. Yeah. Um, but yeah. 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 Um, and implied means forward looking volatility where most people that trade technically or active traders, they think about historical volatility. They look at historical indicators that come from historical volatility, like Bollinger Bands. We're forward looking, we literally look at the market. But where does this all come from? So uh, Charles Dow, um, he created the Wall Street Journal. Uh, he was a regular editor there, um, wrote lots of pieces and he had a whole column there. And he was also the co-founder of, of the Dow Jones Company. Um, and the thing that he wrote about, and so after time, what happened is they, they ultimately um, uh, turned this into a, into a technical kind of view. But he wrote an article with a, uh, article, um, or wrote a series of articles in, in the Wall Street Journal that looked at where the market was at any given point in time. And his view was that we are the most certain about the market continuing to go up when the market is at its peak. So I guess thinking about where the market is now, uh, one uh, counter argument, I guess, is that we are so certain about the market completely ignoring all fundamentals, the PE ratios, the forward PE ratios. We've priced in so much good stuff now in the, into the market that we think that we are not breakable. And we're now in the longest bull run ever in history. And what typically happens is we get into these points of greed if you know what's the uh, what's the uh, internet uh, way of saying buy the dip with the, with a with a swear word on there that I would probably say. Um, so you know every time the market pulls back, we know that it's going to go to new highs. We know that the market is going to break out higher. So we keep putting more money in, and so it's getting to the point of FOMO, kind of fear of missing out, high greed, um, and so we've got so much you know confidence that we're somewhere in that tipping point. And what's going to happen is when the market decides to turn, we're going to go down to hope. We're going to start fearing the market and eventually we throw in the towel. And the market continuously, you go through history, you go through these entire cycles over and over again. Now, in using volatility and, and you, you know, options are effectively a way to transfer risk and that's how they all got created, that they're, they're effectively a risk management system uh, or risk management tool for transferring risk. And when... Uh, when we get into these periods of heightened fear, volatility, implied volatility jumps. People start taking out insurance. It's, you know, it's, if you think about, um, you know, natural disasters coming in and right ahead of that natural disaster, people start taking out insurance because they're afraid for their belongings. The price of insurance, knowing that something is about a, around the corner, that goes up in, in premium. Uh, and options are effectively exactly the same instrument. So implied volatility spikes because the, su the supply um, is outstripped by demand. Um, and we, we get into this sort of period of, of sort of GFC-like, uh, you know, if we look at the, the implied volatility during GFC, it was like three times where we're, where we're at now. And then on the other hand, when we're very sure about the market never ever going and, and being so sort of high on the greedy path, Volatility is super low. And now we're going through these periods of, of, of low volatility and over long periods of time, implied volatility always, always reverts to the mean. Right? That's the only math method that we know. So if we think about it from a very basic point of view, if we price options in a very basic kind of supply and demand, if we, let's take CBA. And if half the people want to go and buy CBA and half of the people in this session want to sell CBA, in an orderly transition, the price won't move. Let's say 85 is a level. We'll all say, we're happy at 85. I want to buy the future of, of CBA. I believe it's going up. And then others say no. We transact. 
But then let's add the Royal Commission into that, for example. Something comes out tomorrow where they say this Royal Commission 2.0, we're now going to go in and do or Westpac, Austrac, that kind of stuff, right? So then what starts happening is the scales shift. So the sellers start selling at any kind of price and the buyers are no longer happy to buy at these levels. They start pulling their bids and they will buy when the market stops collapsing. And what that really turns into these emotional elements of fear and surrender. And so you'll see this, right? So you'll see, um, have a look at, for example, a recent example is Coltex. Coltex went, they said, we're going to halve our profits. The share price dropped 25% overnight, uh, gap lower. It continued selling off. And then over the next three months, it went up right to where it was before. And then ultimately, it was there was a buyout um, conversation that, that started. So these concepts of fear and surrender start coming in into everyday emotional decision making. And as a result, it drives uh, irrational price movements. So if we look at CBA, this is one year of CBA prices uh, over time when we took the slide and have a look at what happens every time implied volatility spikes into that top range. So anytime it got over 20 was the bottom of the market. That uh, late October spike was the bottom of the Royal Commission, right? That was where everybody thought the banking sector in Australia is over as we know it. Right? Every single time it led to a, a short-term bounce. So we know that there's value in this data and, and I guess then what we started saying is, well, how do we know that there is accuracy in this data, that, it, that it's a real thing? So we, we had some, um, uh, uh, we, 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 we got in a team of quants uh, that we, we ran this with, um, and we actually ran a nine month project, there's, there's a mistake on there. And specifically what we've looked at is implied volatility and directionally neutral strategies like the iron condor or the reverse of the, of the straddle. And the most important thing that we, we, we found is that traders in Australia are impeccably good at pricing in implied volatility. So implied volatility is based on the future movement or future anticipated movement within a statistical probability model. And we found that we're bang on. So what does that mean? We've, we had 55,000 samples, we took three years of, over three years of data. And if we look at sort of what the statistical estimate is, a one implied volatility move means one standard deviation move. And statistically, we expect that to be 68%. We found that with all of the data, it's actually 70% of, of the time is when the market stays within one implied volatility. So if the implied volatility is 15 over, over the next, um, between now and the next expiry, as long as that expiry is more than 15 days, it's going to be within that range 70% of the time. Then you go out to two standard deviations. So 15% move, if that's priced into be 15%, it's 30% literally two times. 95% of the statistical estimate, we got 95.3. And then it goes out to 99.5 and 99. The interesting thing is that that includes the big sell-off 2018 at the end of when things became irrational, when implied volatility started widening, it still didn't impact the results. We added some uh, high-level workings. We don't have the specific stats from GFC, same thing. Yep. Right. Implied volatility is always priced to perfection in, in Australia. And I saw similar research from the US, same thing. People are really good at pricing short term professionals. Um, so the iron condor takes advantage of uh, mispricing. So if we know that implied volatility always comes back to the mean, um, and we know that you know if during those peaks of uh, uncertainty, we know that we're effectively becoming, you know, we want to be insurance riders when everything's uncertain, when we're going to get the most bang for our buck. So the iron condor takes advantage of that specifically. So it, there's four legs in there and you're saying, you know, payoff diagrams are something we go a lot through. Um, you've got A, B, C, D, which is A being the lowest price, D being the highest. You want it to be between B and C, which is where your, your soul strikes, how you sell a put and a call there. And then you buy a put and A and D. You know, you can go through that entire so process. So max profits between B and C. Uh, there's a little bit of profit, uh, but then you start losing money when you hit that red. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so yep. it can go up or down, but there's a point where um, you'll uh, start losing money. There is. So um, I was talking about the, the sold straddle as opposed to uh, the, the long straddle. 
Um, and uh, the, the risk is, so you effectively, by buying a put on a call out of the money, you're locking in a maximum loss. So you get to sleep at night. Mm. Uh, you don't wake up in the middle of the night going, you know, we had a massive sell off and what does that mean for my position next week? So we, I guess as traders, we always want to make sure that we're around the next day. I think it's one of, um, uh, it was, I think it was Paul Tudor Jones, I think, that said that. It's one of my favorite trading rules. You want to be around, you know, it's funny in business, it's all about offense. Offense. It's all about you know growing and, and figuring out how do how do we you know how do we take the next step. With trading, it's a complete opposite. It's all about defense, making sure that you know risk management is more important to profitability. Um, so uh, the Iron Condor is, is that particular strategy. Um, you know you can remember how to put this together, or you just go into the option school book, type in Iron, and 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 take advantage of it, or go to the trading scans, and there's an actual button that comes up when 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 the when the time's right. Um, so. Uh, the maximum reward is uh, is uh, the maximum premium that you've received. Maximum loss is the difference between the strikes. So the way that it works is, let's say we think that the market isn't going to go outside of 6,000 points, sell at 6150 calls, 5850 put, for example. We expect it to stay between there just to make sure we're going to buy a 6200 call, 5800 put. The idea is, is that we don't think it's going to go outside of that, but if it goes to 7,000, for example, over, over the period of, of the options life, we won't want to be in that trade and that's the sweet spot where that blue line is so in this case what happened the market went up to 6150 um there was some resistance over there came right back and at all points in time the time uncertainty just decayed away and we made money it ended up being as good as it could get and so everything goes back to these stats right so we know that we were talking about the 68 percent chance which is one standard deviation the market can't go up and down at the same time and the idea is is that more often than not the market actually stays within a certain balance so when you set up an iron condor you'll have a technical view that you think that it's going to stay within a range yeah. uh, and then you'll have a view on volatility yeah. and your view on volatility is uh well it's not as simple as saying is that it's going to fall but it's high for you, high enough for you to get the the pricing that you want, mm. to get the premium that you want, to get the payoff, um, to get a high power. Volatility doesn't need to fall. Mm. Um, it just needs to finish within the range, but if it falls, it's helpful. Mm. Uh, and so there's that element to it as well, that you might trade it because you have a strong technical view that's mm. going to stay within a range, or you might trade it because you think volatility is going to come way off and it's mm. mispriced. Yeah, exactly. Um, the other thing as well is that we we know because we know that short term mm. quite well, um, and you know typically investors will take a much longer view. And, and by the way, when we trade options, it's part of a broader portfolio. We know we're investors in longer term. It's it's a it's a portion. It's an income strategy. But we play where that sort of red line is. Right? We play in that shorter term because we know how to price that up. Um, and that's ultimately where we where we do the strikes. Where we did the analysis, sorry, just quickly, I know you were about to say, but when we did the analysis, we found that where the real money is, is not out at where we think that that 68% chances, we actually bring it in and we sell more premium and we find the best conditions to get into it. Yep. Um, and that was part of the project. And yep. that, uh, probably one of the key findings for both Ivan and myself was that we reduced the percentage chance of being successful on the trade uh, statistically, um, but increased the profitability significantly. And when you played that over a decent sample, it was way better. You were way better off taking the bigger premium. Yeah. So um, that that was yeah. that even, was, even though you're wrong a little bit more often. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Um, actually, we, we've been we need to yeah. we need to keep trucking. But the yeah. the other point um, before everyone falls asleep. Yeah, <laughs> on iron condors. <laughs> Uh, but it, I mean, they're not the most exciting trade, but what it is an example of why options are such a great instrument to trade because you're trading a view that um, you think a range is going to occur. You're trading a view on volatility. But having said all of that, there have been almost zero iron condors over the last four weeks. And so any of the things that we do, if it meets the rules, mm. uh, we'll analyze it. It'll produce the trade, present it to you. If it doesn't meet the rules, it won't. And that's very different to the way that you'll watch people trade because I, I, I love wheeling out the saying, if, if the only tool you've got is a hammer, everything <laughs> starts to look like a nail. But if you are a trader and you go, I trade iron condors or I trade straddles or I trade 
uh, I buy calls and look for bullish opportunities, you'll keep finding trading opportunities. Doesn't matter what the market's doing. Mm. Uh, and and the great thing about options is you you know regardless. There are trades for every single market condition. Mm. Maybe not every day of the week, but every single market condition, there are uh, trading opportunities, right? So, and it allows you to adapt with the market. All right, cool an idea. So, um, I guess we're so just speaking about specifically our own condors. We broke it up into three: um, gold, silver, bronze. Uh, ultimately, we found. So, this is uh, we, we haven't updated this since Jan two thousand nineteen, but we've got a fair few winners in there. Um, well do something probably early, uh, middle of Feb or so when we will update this. I'm just running through a project now, but um, we had five gold trades, 28 uh, when trades. When did the quant start? Uh, they started, uh, well, sorry, it was sorry, it was back tested up until uh, mm. Jan 2019. Mm. So they finished their project around about then. For the next group. Um, the next group was middle of that year, I think, wasn't mm -hmm. it? Oh, oh, sorry. Yeah. When, when did the next group? The of next quants, group for the starting. Ah, uh, wedding on confirmation. So wedding that's on confirmation. Yeah, that's so we've got one of the big unis that are yeah, going to yeah, yeah, yeah. give us a couple of PhD students. Yeah, wed wedding for confo. Yeah. So there's there's okay. a bunch of stuff there, but yeah, um, right. hopefully sort of middle of middle of this year. Mm -hmm. Um, so uh, we ran that. So anyway, so we we saw that we significantly outperformed the market. Um, the differences are just taking the gold and silver, or taking the gold and silver and blonde, bronze. Um, then sort of the differences on 10, 20, 40, 100,000, including fees. Um, and we also assumed some slippage um, because you don't always get the, the middle of the price. Um, so we did it April 2019. So we haven't, sorry, when we're saying we haven't updated our stats, we haven't done it sort of since since uh, the since July uh, last year. Uh, we'll, we'll do that. We'll, we'll do another batch uh, project on that, mail everybody about, about that. We'll do another webcast. Um, but so we found that so most most trades that identify we came up as max profit we had a max loss ctx had a big that big downfall um and so that that was the only trade that we really lost money on which is outside our conditions um and really pops up in the same structure as the options game it pops up as a trade ideas tells you what the trade is uh we also usually send out a text message get market maker pricing on it tells you what the um points is, are tells you what the risk reward is so as you slide that up you know, it'll show you how much you're risking versus the reward. Um, you can go in and change the idea. You pick the strikes. Um, so you know that says that between 24 and 28, we're going to make money. Current price is 26 um, and it needs to stay there for the next six days. Um, and then ultimately, you, the maximum profit is between 25 and 27. And then you go and place a trade. So we've really made it simple. There's a lot of numbers and and, and algorithms behind that um, and constantly adapts with time. Um, and uh, it's it's available to so to everybody that's part of the implied volatility trial. So if you do want to get access to that, uh, type in yes, um, and we'll we'll set you up. But we do need to keep trucking. So specifically around trading systems, which is stuff that uh, you know is uh, is is yours. But do you want to talk about lit, which is the more exciting directional stuff? Yeah, I, I think so. Look, look really quickly. I I I mean um, the 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 when you play an options game, probably what you don't do is use a, a trading system. You'll be coming up with an idea or your trading system is not taking into consideration the risk element of, of how you go about your trading. So uh, the lit trading system is um, one that is used to identify breakout trades ultimately. And we're building in uh, into the lit system the condors as well. Um, so that you've got, okay, either I think the market's going to break out and go up, break out and go down, or I think it's going to go sideways. And we will, on top of that, we have conversations each week about um, if a trade like a long straddle or so forth is there, we'll bring it up in the trade group and discuss it and we can get pricing for you mm. on those as well. So all of those different trade ideas are, I think, I don't have a view. I think it's at a pivot point. I think it's going to move would be one. Uh, I think it's going to stay within a channel or I think it's going to do a major breakout and I can predict the move. So it covers you in most scenarios, it gives you ability to trade and we're always considering that volatility angle that's in there as well. The lit system, the breakout trades, really what we're saying is as traders, when we, when Ivan and I look at doing a trade and it's a directional trade, we're not thinking, oh, I'm going to make 20% on this trade. We're thinking, I'm going to make 100%, I'm going to make 150%. We're not, we, we, we because we know that, if I, if I run a trading system and I get it right 80% of the time and I make 20% profit each time, but then when I have a loss, it's because an extraordinary event occurred 
and it really moved against me strongly. And then I, I lose 80% or I lose, you know, more or whatever. And after all my fees and everything like that, I'm not really getting ahead. I'm not making real money. So really you need to be looking at trading systems where you've got some certainty and confidence around what you're doing. And then you're going for a big mm. profit on the trade. And that's the way we like to trade, right? So uh, in this, or at least with this particular style of, of trading system, that's that's the way that we go about it. Um, so we looked at, um, we, we've done this against the top 15 assets based on ASX liquidity and run this over an extensive period of time. 40% is the maximum we've ever had at risk at any one point in time. Over of, that period. Of trading, of trading capital. Of trading capital. Yeah. Um, and um, we, we, you know, I think it was one losing month and we've been in the market 100% of the time, right? Um, so there's some of the stats. I'll just put them up there. I don't really like to talk to them too much because they're, they're, they're big numbers. Um, but you can go in and get access. If you type in yes, if you haven't already typed in yes, type in yes. And we'll give you access to the platform, we'll give you access to all the trade ideas, including the lit trading system over over a period of time. And you can have a look at it. And you, I haven't mentioned back testing. You can also go and you can back test any trade ideas we've had and just see how it worked out or test our rules over a period of time for yourself and see and see how they line up. The idea behind that is if you went through that process, like we went through the process and like our quants do the, the heavy lifting for us in that regard, that you'll have confidence in what you're doing and you know you've got a system. So we want to be in a position where we take the emotion out of our trading, but we're, we're actually confident enough to actually make a big trade and take a big profit off the table. We're not scared of losing money on one trade because we know that ultimately what we do works. And so if we do it and we continue to do it, we'll make money. So if we do 10 trades, yeah, three of them lost, but in the three losing trades, we didn't you know, lose our bundle over the fact that that trade's not working for us. We're just observing as best we can the information in front of us. And that is easier said than done, obviously. That's the trick with trading, but it's quant tested and that we want to have simple to use rules, right? So the idea is that when we're setting up a trading system, the flow of that is the first thing we do is we arrive at a decision that we think something's going to happen, right? So we've got a hypothesis. If that happens and that happens, that lines me up and I think something's going to break out and it's going to move up, right? So I've got a view, I'm looking in my direction. I then look at how I time this entry, what's the, what, you know, how I get in, right? what is that point where, okay, so the market's moved to a point uh, where it's at a 52 week high, for example, it breaks that 52 week high, that might be the signal, okay, that's my entry, right? All the other factors have lined up, now I've had my breakout, now I get into the trade, uh, and then how do I monitor this position? What data do I need to observe? And what changes in that to change my view? Uh, or get me out of the trade uh, or, or early or, or or just says nothing to see here, leave it going. Um, and that comes back to the final point, which is my follow, my checklist of things that I would look at. Um, so we, we, that's the, the, the flow. Um, and I, I guess when you're talking about making sure that you've got things set up, if you go and start a business and when you're new to trading or when you've been trading for an extended period of time, um, if you get into trading and you don't have a trading plan, it's kind of like saying I'm opening up a bakery and I bake delicious bread. I'm going to kill it. This is, I'm going to have, I'm going to make so much money out of baking this most delicious bread. And guess what? It's the best bread. But if you haven't thought about um, who you're going to hire, how you're going to manage those people, uh, inventory control, actually where you put your shop in the first place uh, and all of those different factors, then good luck. Right, you've been threatening to bring in this delicious bread for ever since I've known you. Well, one day, one day, <laughs> I want to try it. <laughs> I do not cook bread, for the record. Yeah, um, the with it. but that's it. That's a trading system. So you know, you want to be when you've you've considered everything you need to consider that's going to go to the point of of trading successfully, and then it's about rolling out your plan. So you want to be as mechanical, as unemotional, and as Ivan mentioned it. First and foremost, this is about uh, capital preservation. Mm. So yes, it's about making money. It's about having the confidence to stay in the market, but it's also about keeping your bank mm. right. I so think that, that you're reducing of emotion is helps that risk management so much. Yep. Um, otherwise, you literally are just gambling. Yep. So if I'm trading and I, and if I talk to someone and they're a trader and and how do you make your decision? How you pick direction? Then they, they say, well, I do this and I do that, and then and. And then, then I, I, you know, I, I don't want to get in anyone's face about how they go about doing their trading. But the, the real question from there is like, how do you know? Yeah. <laughs> Have you actually run the numbers? Yeah. Uh, if you get, a, if you look at a sample of ten and 
and all 10 of those are profitable, do you then all of a sudden have a lifelong belief system around Sell the house. Um, <laughs> of, of, of how all of that works? So, you know, in, in, in we, what we try to sort of encourage people is to, you've got to spend some time and do your back testing or you've got to look at the data and see what the data tells you and then use that as part of your, your, your decision-making process because that's where the confidence to be able to stick in the trades to be able to extract the value that you want to extract comes from. So um, anyway, so again, that's why we encourage use technology, look and observe data, be impartial, come up, have a hypothesis, test it, and then go in there with a well-considered plan and be, uh, you know, and be able to change that plan. But don't change it because of three things that happened to you. Just statistics, mm. when it, you know, the odds went against you. <laughs> it just didn't work out then you throw everything out or you lose something that's probably more important than your capital mm. and that's your confidence. And, yes. um, you know, and, and, and so really you'll hear us waxing on about trading systems and the like, but we're big believers in, in this part of it. And so in building a, a trading system, I, I, I might, you know, say that there is, we run other sessions on this kind of thing today. So the, mm. from the options gain perspective, but, you know, establishing the hypothesis, Ivan and I, uh, three years ago over a bottle of red um, or three maybe we're discussing um, the breakout trading systems uh, and we yeah. established a hypothesis and it wasn't based on what we were talking about at that time it was based on a lot of experiences and trading and so forth from there that got tested and looked at you know hundreds of thousands of different iterations and from there, some of my stuff really got found out for being wrong yeah. which was interesting i always thought it was right you know through mm. day trading and you know i used to do a lot of day trading well the interesting thing that i found because i got to look at your stuff uh, in this uh, in that yeah. and and see how it worked and it, you know i had no mm. baggage associated mm. with being right or anything like that mm. it, it lined up beautifully but a lot mm. of the assumptions that were made were unnecessary data that was being observed. So, oh. but you know me, I always overcomplicate it and never pare it down, and it turns out to be, you know, keep it simple, stupid, right? Yeah. Like, <laughs> well, but it's it's interesting, um, you know, to to see that my old chart somewhere. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. have that somewhere. Yeah. So it, it it allowed us to then look at that that in that instance, we could define rules around it, and then you can optimize those rules. And one of the things about bringing the quants in, and and a, and a reason I was asking you about the quant for an update mm. on, on this session is that. Um, we are looking at, we've got some really good trading systems that we can, uh, that create ideas and you can follow those systems and you can learn those rules and, and trade with us on that side of things. But uh, the future for us um, as a business is going out and actually hearing from you guys mm -hmm. what your systems are and then going away and testing those and coming back to you with data and then sharing that data and then coming out with some systems that allows us to be better to as a scan community. the markets yeah. to give us more this is ideas. the good thing about options it's not zero sum so just because you've made money and i've traded with you doesn't yeah. mean that we both uh, you know that i'm going to take your money this yep. is this is the thing as opposed to all other markets and everything like that options are it's the market makers that trade against you so that's that's where the community aspect comes in in a big way so I guess let's just let's just uh, yeah put, look put... I, I think I'm just gonna I'll probably just add so if you want access to uh, trading system information uh, trade ideas the we've, platform we've to trade got off an actual you, if you haven't already typed in yes you get it, it you can, you can type in yes and we'll get that for you but let's just move through this this will be covered on another session uh, we just quick, quick, quickly mm. I do want to talk about this because this is the how we've had a consistent profit. Um, there's a couple of rules that we go through. I'm just going to uh, move through this really quickly. We'll look at 52-week highs. We want to break away through that or a recent point of resistance. Uh, we'll look at 50-day moving average, 200-day moving average, simple stuff that everyone else can see. We also use the ADX, and we want to see that the trend's up. So, um, you know, we want to see that's kind of the, the where we would get long, typically where that arrow is because that's where all the conditions were met. Um, you know, we broke the resistance. It's all high. Uh, all moving higher, and what we trade is what's called a lit long. So a lit long is a leading indicator trend trading system. The long obviously dictates that we're bullish. Um, and so what we did in every single game is we did this on the XJO when price was bullish. When the market broke lower, we would actually take a bearish view and would make money effectively. Um, so the lit long is a, at the money bull uh, bull put spread, um, and then what would happen is we, we'd actually ultimately uh, quote quote. Close it down. We, we try to 
Hit when you I mean, every time you hit your computer, it reverberates through my microphone. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah, maybe I need to get you a better shotgun. Um. So anyway, so so in every single game, and you know, we, what we do is we 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 have some fun and we ultimately leverage it. So, as opposed to our normal capital just, rules, just, we take fifty k into a trade. Just just on sorry on the previous um at the moment the the sorry the market has done ticked all four the first four boxes, but not the last one. But not the ADX. Yeah. So. The breakout that happened recently, and for those that, that attend our weeklies, um, we'll know we've spoken about this at <laughs> length, but um, everything lined up, but the ADX was below 20. So uh, we were looking for that breakout trade, but it just didn't come for us. And there was a range of, we like reverse engineered our theories as to why, but the, the ultimate reason is it was below 20, so you don't mm. get to trade it. Mm. Um, so interesting. Anyway. Which was why you ultimately traded at straddle as opposed to, yep. you know, so volatility was low. Uh, take advantage of that. So yeah, so it it, it is an interesting point, um, and I guess we'll, we'll we'll see how the next couple of weeks go. Um, so uh, we did one trade uh, overall, ended up with 129k um, as a profit. Um, so that was you know I guess just to literally the the things lined up. I think second or third day we ended up getting long, um, and we've done this every game. Right. So what we do in our trading systems, we'll go in and trade small amounts across a magnitude of different stocks, including XJ or anything that's meeting our, our conditions, um, which is obviously slightly different to, to this. But, you know, last game we traded seven times. We finished second. We had 330K. Um, and, you know, the time before that we did others. So, you know, the idea is, is is quite simple. You know, this is, I think, the slide from the previous game. You know, the, everything was moving higher. We ended up going into a little long. Um, again, it's in our options cookbook. Uh, so, you know, if you want to get access to the systems or the white paper or anything like that, type in systems, we'll, we'll attach it um, and we, we, can, we can send that to you. Uh, it's got all the rules in it. Uh, we're not precious about those. Um, and the idea is that it ultimately serves as a basis for your trading systems that you can go and grow and, and test your hypothesis and the back testing and stuff like that. So um, anyway, so it was, uh, you know, it's, a, it's enough money. I think uh, I've spoken about what, what a lit long is. Uh, we're going to be talking a lot more about that for those of you that are interested in, in hearing more about it, uh, that or the Iron Condor trading systems. Um, we didn't update these slides. Um, oh, no, sorry, no, 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 we did. We did actually, this, this, is, this is correct. Yes, 6,700, 6,850 is what we traded. Um, and then we ultimately... Uh, chuck that in. So the implied volatility platform gives you access to all of that. Um, it's impliedvolatility.com.au for those of you that didn't notice the uh, the footer. Um, it's the same systems as we send out to the professionals, except now it's actually a lot more powerful. Um, we've got a lot of special, unique, uh, exclusive features that uh, Patrick has asked for over time, including the trading stuff. It allows you to go on and build, trade, and execute TMC straight from the, uh, from the platform, which is the combos, multi-legged up to four legs at the same time fat finger protection, and it's the only real-time options calculator in Australia. Equities are 1995. Uh, we're not specializing in those, but but uh, that's something we've got. Uh, 2495 or 24 basis points for an options, and that's 30% cheaper than everything else out yep. on the market. It's um, fair to say if you're an equities trader and an equities trader only, you would never work with us. Or yeah. We would never work with <laughs> well, you know, there's uh, this, there's another but, entity but that the, I'm that I'm whole, rocking with. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, but the whole theory behind uh, what we do, which is implied volatility and reach markets, is the you know the partner that offers the um, the uh, broking side of it with it, along with it is that um, you know the 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 ability to trade inexpensively is core, and the ability to place TMCs online is really a point of difference, all right? Daniel just asked as a, as a way of using anchors, so we're talking strip straps, uh, mm -hmm. uh, one, two, rolling uh, anchors up and down with price movement as a means to protect your stocks. Tomorrow night, we are running a session for open markets uh, and all open markets clients, which is a how to protect your portfolio. So if you've got a portfolio of stocks, uh, you want to get access to that. I don't know, I'm out of words to use. Uh, if you want to attend tomorrow's session, type in webcast yeah webinar yeah. something like that anyway so that's that's about protection specifically so if you want to get access to that uh, then maybe that's a question for tomorrow um uh that we can do uh can it's 24.95 per leg not per contract um so just just to answer that so um uh, so that's cool all right so uh 24.95 per leg so if you want to do an iron condor it's 100 bucks uh, versus freaking 400. And so when we ran this over over a standard brokerage rate versus online versus sort of the big four versus full service, 
um, across our trading systems. That's sort of what you get. So a 10K account, you're going to be paying literally a small fraction of what you pay anywhere else. It all adds up quite a lot. Um, our, our overall goal is to find more and more efficiencies, find the right uh, relationships, I guess, to go on and, and take that rate even lower when the time comes. Um, and really, we, we're trying to push this. We make our money ultimately on technology subscriptions and on uh, which we then ultimately reinvest back into enhancing that platform and doing that kind of stuff. So uh, unfortunately, the, the Australian market means you can't make a lot of money out of brokerage and it, you know, it, it is what it is. But we started the, this business uh, maybe a year and a half ago, yeah. maybe maybe not even um and we'd be probably getting up to one of the busy options trading desks in the country now mm -hmm. we'd be the fastest growing platform no question about it it's been a bit of a side project for ivan and myself because we've got other businesses that we run but it's the one thing that we're both super passionate about mm -hmm. i mean if you ask me out of everything that goes on in the markets the things that i would like to do um, and spend my time doing it would be trading options mm -hmm. uh, and we're joined by like our clients are the same <laughs> and we kind of started off by talking more generally about like a more broader range of things or dumbing it down a little bit we've just decided you know what our service is built by options traders it's built specifically for options traders and we're nothing not, else in this particular yeah. part of our business we're happy with a couple of hundred of serious traders we don't yeah. need thousands and thousands of people and and it's proven to be um the best way of going and yeah. uh and, and it's the way we enjoy doing it so um, so when you're calling up you're speaking to the same guy yep. you know to you know yep. um you get access to us if you need to give us a call yep. you know i spoke to one of our clients the, the other day the, for half the, an hour the, the tim who uh if you are taking a trial will be someone that can help you understand the system or access the trade ideas will give you access to different things uh tim came first in the game third in the game really really smart um has a really good feel for the market and a very good technical understanding yeah. of options and then on the advisory side all of the guys are traders like they're proper traders they do serious volumes um we've got to check all their trades so um <laughs> we know this and uh you know they're very good at what they do they understand the market and they're passionate options people and so when you're having a conversation about trading um, when people are talking about the things that matter around trading and making good decisions, that's what you're really looking for. Uh, so it, it, and if anyone specifically would like to talk to is looking for an advisor or a trader that can help them price up. I know, for example, um, I haven't spoken to you about this, but the uh, straddle that I was closing out of on was it been Friday or something like that, mm. um, I was busy at work in a meeting and we're doing, we're doing uh, we're working on a project or on a, on a different type of trade and I uh, couldn't do anything for two hours. So I sort of put the trade on, mm. but it didn't give anyone instructions, didn't give it to an advisor, mm. was just managing it from my phone and then didn't look at it for two hours. It probably cost me like four or $500. So mm. the cost of brokerage to deal with an advisor sometimes mm. is uh, cheap. Uh, especially if they mm. get, get get you in and out of positions. Mm. Uh, I know that also uh, added benefit of the guys because they're experienced traders, they're ultimately act as mentors. So if mm. you feel like that you want to continue with options, you feel like you're not quite ready to take the next steps and, and, and you don't want to be dealing directly online and you feel like you need that sounding board and to ask people, uh, they're, the, they're fantastic for that. So they, they can, you know, there's what, five on the desk, four on the desk now? Yep. Yep. Um, and uh, they're there all the time, and so they, they specifically can talk about markets with you. So as part of this, um, you get access to the platform. So if you sign up, you get access to the platform for, for a month. Um, uh, you get uh, access to all of our webcasts, so you get our trading systems, you get access to our trading group uh, while, you're, while you're in that trial, um, and you get access to all of our education straight there on the board. All the education, even if you're not uh, a, a client, uh, and you choose not, not to continue with, 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 the, with, with the platform, you get access to the education, which we constantly update. So yep. impliedvolatility.com.au or type in yes, uh, you know, if you want to have a browse there, um, uh, type in yes. Um, uh, you do need to let us know if you want to be part of the trial because it's through the, if you sign up, self sign up on the website, you get seven days. Uh, you need to talk to us. To, uh, you need to talk to Tim on the desk to, yep. to make it 30 yep. days. Make it 30 days. And uh, it's only available if you haven't had a trial before. Yeah. Yep, 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 yep. So um, next episode, we're doing a heap of webinars. So again, the, the trading groups uh, is probably, when are we doing? Oh, actually, I, I might not be able to do this Thursday because I'm in the course. Um, and then next week, I'm in Sydney. But usually, we're doing we're doing these sessions together. So Thursday lunchtimes, 
uh, you want to come across to that uh, trade groups, um, sign up to the trial, speak to Tim. Yep. Uh, he can get you access to that. Um, the next options game is that we started. Uh, well, it's not started yet. It's it's in in trial mode. Uh, it kicks off the first of Feb, I think, from memory. Second. Second of Feb. So it's right around the corner. Um, right right back into it. So we're not going to try some other strategies. Do that. Uh, we're running different webcasts for that kind of thing. So if you want to be part of the trade group, obviously we'll do a whole heap. Uh, we get uh, we work with Graham O'Brien from the ASX, uh, and we'll generally invite a funds manager in uh, to talk as well. So um, to talk more on the investment side. So we'll be doing something uh, with um, maybe a couple of funds managers next time, a couple of traders, um, and yeah, yeah we've, got, we've got a whole bunch of stuff going on. Good. Over the next period. Um, as you guys, by the way, uh, you know, we're, uh, we're happy to take any questions you guys have. Um, uh, Martin just asked a question is, can you enter, exit at take profit level orders, uh, close your combo at a certain level? Uh, you know, look, it's something that comes up a fair bit. Um, uh, people want to get access to that. Uh, we don't do this at the moment. Uh, it's not a technical problem. It's more of a compliance problem uh, just in the way that, that options trade. Uh, so we're working through some of the legalities on that. Um, Hopefully, uh, we'll have that to you at some point in time. It's an interesting concept, uh, but the way that the industry trades, um, you've got an ability to place options, uh, sorry, trade alerts in the system. So what you'll do is you'll say, I want to wait for the underlying to go to X amount. So, you know, let's say stock XYZ is trading at 40. You want to get out if it goes to 42. Uh, you, you'll go on and set a price alert at, at 42. You go in on your phone, enable the notification, and it'll actually push it to your phone. Um, that way there's no delays in things like SMSs or anything like that. It goes straight to your phone um, and, and uh, you, you get access to that. So that, that's typically how the industry uh, operates. So that's what I would do, Martin. Um, uh, um, just, Michael, that email that you sent, is that a home mail or hotmail? Um, and we can uh, get Tim to reach out. Um, so if you guys have any questions, please ask them. Uh, you know, we've, we've, we've been through a fair bit. Um, we will obviously talk about trading systems. For those of you that are joining us tomorrow, we'll, we'll talk to you guys then um, in the, uh, in, in the uh, hedging session. Um, for those of you that want to get access to the trial, uh, type in yes. Um, Tim can get in touch with you tomorrow. Is he, is he at work right now? Can he still go and do no, that? No, he's going out for a show. What, what is this? Yeah. He's, he's usually working at this yeah. point in time, working in these trading systems. Uh, but as part of, uh, if you take a trial uh, and, and on an ongoing basis, Tim's your support person. So as soon as you get in there, you've got a question about how to use a calculator, how to use backtesting, how to set up trades or use the um, trade ideas uh, or any education, you just call up and speak to Tim. He's not a, a, a broker. He doesn't um, help with transactions. He's not thinking about that side of things. He's just worried about supporting people so they can pick up the tech mm -hmm. and start using it or so they can actually <coughs> understand a new strategy or whatever it might be. So that, that support and education is there for you. Okay, um, any final questions, please put them in. Um, for everyone that's requested stuff, we'll go through it all tomorrow and, and get in contact with everyone and set you all up for your trials. And, and Although based on pieces. feedback, it might be over two days. There's plenty of It might be, uh, yeah, by the end of the week, we'll yeah. have got in contact with yeah. everyone. And got you set up. But so that's uh, if, if you get a call from an 03 5795 number, it's not spam. It's Tim calling you. It's Tim calling you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, or call into the office if you need to as well. Yeah. Beautiful. All right. Uh, any final questions, please put them through. Otherwise, um, you know, we'll, um, as you drop out of the session, um, by, please give us some feedback. These sessions that we do after the games are, um, we're, you know, we're looking at a format for it. So any ideas, please send them through. Let us know how you found the session. And uh, otherwise, thank you very much for coming along. Thank you and, for hosting. Yep. And we'll see you on the, uh, uh, well, well, tomorrow night or Thursday, th or Thursday. depending on which ones yep. you're, uh, you're or attending. On, on any of the many other things that we've been talking <laughs> about. Thanks, guys. Have a wonderful night. <laughs> Thanks, well, guys.